What do you think of when I say theater? You probably think of something like Avengers Endgame, and you wouldn't be too far off. That's the movies, that's the cinema, that's a theater. And movies can do some really cool things. They can allow us to explore our imaginations and think about what the world would be like with superpowers and spandex. Not as cool as you'd think. But today we're not talking about theater, we're talking about the theater. That's Shakespeare and plays and learning our lines and where breaking our legs is actually a good thing. I know, weird. But also awesome. So today we're gonna talk about the theater. Let's get started. To be or not to be. So what is theater? It's not a building, a book, or a person, is it? Not quite. The theater is all of those things put together and a lot more. But just to make it easy, let's say that the theater is the place and act of putting on a theatrical performance where there is at least one performer and one person in the audience. Basically, if there's one person performing and one person watching, it's a theater. So does that mean anything we do in front of anybody is a theatrical performance? Maybe, but only if you think really artsy about it. Most of the time though, people who are thinking of theater think about plays. Plays are written instructions on how a show is supposed to go. They detail the setting and the characters and the action. It's a lot like a book. In fact, you could read a play just like a book if you wanted to. Reading a play is only half the fun though. When you read a play, everything that's going on is always in your imagination. But when you see a play, Everything takes place on a stage, under a big light, behind a big red curtain. Some movies that we know and love were turned into plays, like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Footloose, and The Lion King. And some went the other way around, starting like musical plays and then turning into movies. Think Les Miserables, The Sound of Music, and Annie. And then there was Hairspray, which was turned into a movie, then a play, then a movie again. And it gets crazier. I googled how many movie adaptations there have been for Romeo and Juliet, the play by William Shakespeare, and Google didn't even know. It was like, I don't know, I stopped counting after 30. There are even rumors that Shakespeare wasn't even the original creator of his own plays. In fact, many people thought that he stole many of his plays from other popular stories and mythologies at the time. That means he adapted his plays from other plays. Anyway, just because understanding plays and theater can be complicated and expensive, like millions of dollars just to put on a Broadway musical, that doesn't mean that we can't make our own. Like I mentioned before, a performance only needs one person and one audience member, and a play is like a story that you act out instead of read. Plenty of people put on plays with their local groups, most of which are volunteers, and there's nothing stopping you from putting on your own play right where you are right now. At this point, you're basically a theater expert, right? I was pretty sure of that. If you're watching this video, you're probably pretty smart, so I can just leave you to do your job. Uh, thanks for watching the video. A door <laughs> opens. Camera pans to another Kyle, who enters from an unforeseen door. He's wearing a hood and looking ominously in the direction of the first Kyle. Uh, can I help you? You mustn't end the video now. But the kids who watch my videos are smart. They could do the rest of the work themselves. It just takes a few Google searches like I did. Door slams, interrupting Kyle. They must make their own plays now, and you must teach them how. But I've never written a play myself. How do I teach them how to write plays? Use the three-act structure, Kyle. The what? The three-act structure. Learn its ways yourself, then teach your class. Believe in your students, and believe in yourself. <laughs> Got it. Thanks again. I guess we're gonna... Learn about the three-act structure now. Yeah, so the three-act structure is a really common storytelling technique. So common, in fact, that there's like 18 different variations. This is going to be the most simple one, so we can dive right in and start making our own plays. So the first act is called a character with a plan. Start your story with some kind of character, whichever one you'd like, and have them have some kind of objective or goal. For example, in my skit earlier, I would planned on ending my video early and just letting you guys figure the stuff out on your own. Do the same in your story, whether that is a hero trying to slay a dragon or a treasure hunter trying to find treasure. Create a character that you find interesting and give them something that they're trying to achieve. Act 2 is called Something Gets in the Way. In my skit's example, we had Hooded Kyle 
who came in and got in the way of my plans on ending the video. You can do the same or similar in your story by creating a character that gets in the way of your first character's plans. Actually, you don't even have to make it a character. Maybe a storm gets in the way. Maybe an animal that's run astray. Anything you can come up with to get in the way of your character's plans serves wonderfully in Act 2. Finally, there's Act 3. This is where the character changes. Sometimes the change is a complete change of plans, like me making this part of the video. And sometimes the change is more subtle. Maybe the character achieved their goal, but in a way that we didn't think they would. Maybe the dragon was friendly and the treasure was a lollipop. Either way, make something interesting or fun change at the end of your story. And that's the basics of the three-act story structure, act one, two, and three, beginning, middle, and end. I hope you guys make some really cool plays with it. I don't know how to make outros for videos. And that's everything. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Uh, this outro is at my house. I hope you learned something from all of this. We're going to be doing a lot more summer content over at the Panama City Beach Library. I hope you guys tune in. I gotta go now. I'm gonna go take Hooded Kyle to Chick-fil-A. Stay safe. Wash your hands. We'll see you next time.